It's time to get crunk, baby. What do you call a fake noodle? I don't know. A uh, M pasta. <laughs> <laughs> oh whoa whoa wow my god welcome to the dynamite gizmo podcast everyone episode 181 yeah 181 make sure you enunciate you pronounce every syllable in and out left and right up and down forward and backwards we're in the 3d space ladies and guys we're in a 3d space we're in the world Uh uh-huh we're living in the world we live in a world we live in a world that is three dimensions but we perceive things in two dimensions. What's up with that? I want to go to a 4D dimension. Let's go to a 4D. 4D. 4D, not 40. Don't get them confused. Here's today's card. It's tridition around here to show you the card, but it's not tridition to show you what's on the card, but you'll find out anyway because we'll talk about it. Yeah! Whoa! Oh my god, today is uh, another day, another day, another dollar. (laughs) There's nothing I hate more than that saying, those sayings. The sayings that you hear that are so generic, so played out, so overused, which is the same thing as saying played out, but you you hear it. On a daily basis, and you get sick of it. You get sick of it, people. But let me tell you this. I got sick of it the first time I heard it. When someone comes up to you and says, you know, a co-worker, and they're like, well, another die, another dollar. (laughs) Am I right? (laughs) Get out of my face, Gregory. I don't want to hear your bullshit. Don't do it. Stop saying it. Another day, another fuck you. How about that? Another day, another get the fuck out of my face, Gregory. I can't stand it. You know what? Check this out. My stream deck's fucking free on me again. Every god damn time. Beep, boop, 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 beep. We got some new additions, folks. Yep. I sure did. <laughs> hey, that worked out. <laughs> I wish he kind of said, yep, we sure did. That would be nice. Oh, it's frozen. Cool. Yep. I sure did. Now you get to hear all the little intricacies. Now that I don't find it funny anymore, you can hear his wife trying to say something twice. Listen. Yep. I sure did. She went, tit. Who knows what she was going to say? Man, this stream deck. What is wrong with this stream deck? It never fucking works. I'm on my second page here. And after like 20 seconds, it shoots you back to the first page. As if you wanted that. I don't want that, mummy. It's been. It's been. Today's going to be a great episode. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel it tickling my britches. (laughs) That's my new favorite saying. I heard it on Red Dead Redemption. I know what you're thinking. You're like, why why are you talking about Red Dead Redemption? That's like fucking two years old already. The second one. And the first one's like ten years old. But it's a great game. And I've played it again. And I've been playing it over and over and over and over again. Because I can't afford to buy new games. Are you crazy? I don't got that kind of money. Like Cyberpunk 2077. To be honest, I don't even know what the game is. I don't know what it's about. I don't know the storyline. I don't know how much it is. I don't know what consoles it's available on. All I know is that Keanu Reeves is in it. And everyone's playing it. And everyone has an opinion on it. 
That happens all the time. With all, Whenever something new comes out, you can guarantee I'm not going to have it. And I'm not going to care about it because I don't have access to getting it. There was a time back in the day where I did have access to those things. And I would purchase what's new. And I would pay attention. And I felt a part of the world. But I'm too humbled right now. <laughs> That's not true. You can't do that. You can't fucking, you can't just say I'm too humble like that. Like you're bragging about something. That's just, that defeats the whole purpose of saying you're humble. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. You're not humble. You're just a bumblebee buzzing around. Like, you know, you're like a chameleon trying to chameleon your way into a situation. Slither on up. Well, I guess they don't slither. They kind of. They kind of jig over. And then you change color to blend in like a goddamn piece of camouflage. Get out of my face with the humble. No, but, I, you know, I've been watching a lot of H3, Ethan Klein stuff. I say Ethan Klein because I want to talk about Ethan Klein specifically. And you know what? Now we'll talk about the whole H3 crew. All right, Dan, Ian, Zach, A.B., Trisha, Ela. All right. They're not fucking humble anymore. They were for a long time. Now they're so full of themselves. And I saw Ethan on Steve-O's podcast, and he was just like, yeah, I've got a $9.1 million house. And yeah, I'm okay with saying it. And I understand where he's coming from when he's like, yeah, you got to be real, you know? You just let people into your lives. If you're going to be on the internet, let people into your lives. Let them know what's going on because you want it to be real. And I agree with that, but you can slowly start to see that the money is making him too cocky. Mm -hmm. He's too, he's becoming a little too bougie. I gotta agree with Trisha on this one. There's a there was a you know a long time where I was like I don't want anything to do with Trisha Paytas, 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 Paytas. We'll call her Trisha P, like a penis, cause she likes penises. For the longest time, I thought, you know, Trisha is dumb and an attention whore and a regular whore. And uh, a clickbaiter, someone who doesn't appreciate the platform and is just using it to squeeze whatever money she can out of it with her titties. But after I've gotten to know her on Frenemies, that has completely changed. I feel very differently about her. Uh, I kind of enjoy her content. Well, I enjoy the Frenemies content, and whenever she's on the H3 podcast, I enjoy it, but sometimes I agree with what Trisha has to say, and I never thought I would think that way, but, and it makes me feel, you know, it, it, allow, it, it taught me something, you know, it taught me not to judge books by their cover, and I generally try not to judge books by their cover, but Sometimes you see people on the internet act a certain way and you just immediately judge them. And Trisha was one of those people. And when I saw that she wasn't how I perceived her, then uh, it really opened things up for me. And I said to myself, hey, maybe these other creators who you think are fools are actually not what you think they are. Can I think of an example? No? No? you damn right I can't. Home, home on the range. That's what you do when your mind goes blank and you run into things to talk about during a podcast. You got to fill the space. I was watching a TikTok the other day from a clip. It was a clip from a podcast. Um, and I know the podcast was part of the All Things Comedy uh, uh, Enterprise because 
the set was that generic set that everyone uses when they're first starting out their podcast. Eric Griffin used it. Some other people used it, but if you saw the set, you would know. It's like wood walls, and there's pictures of all the famous comedians' podcasts on the wall. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. But I was watching that podcast, and the two the two guys on there, I guess they were both the hosts of the podcast. I don't remember what it was called because it was so bad. It wasn't so bad. Don't judge a book by its cover. Remember. But it was um, it was awkward. It was awkward. It was uncomfortable. It was actually uncomfortable to watch because the, the pauses that they had were not done right, okay? There's a difference between awkward, funny content, you know, where it's intentionally awkward, but they're doing it properly to the point where the viewer isn't feeling awkward. They're actually finding it funny. There's a difference between that and then actual awkwardness where you're intentionally being awkward because you think it's going to be funny, but it turns out that it's not actually funny because it's actually just awkward. You see what I'm saying? And that's what they were doing. They were trying to be uh, they were trying to be the awkward funny that everyone craves nowadays and um they weren't doing it right. They were just being actually awkward and it was just actually uncomfortable. And I didn't enjoy it. And I hated it. All right? It made me look at them and they s- and say, You guys are fucking amateurs. Get out of here. But then I thought about Trisha Paytas. Trisha P. And I was like, hold on a minute here. We don't know anything about these guys. We don't know if this is... Maybe this is like their first episode. Who knows? Maybe it's the beginning of their episode maybe if i watch the entire podcast cax podcasts if i watch the entire podcast you know in its entirety with all the other context it would have been funny who knows but you got to give people second and third chances in certain you know to a certain extent Nothing is black and or white. You feel me? Nothing. Politics included. You know, Andrew Santino really said it well when he uh, had Christina P. on a while back on Whiskey Ginger. He was talking about this exact thing, the black and white way of viewing society and how politics is like the prime example of why you cannot be black or white and i'm not talking about race i'm talking about (laughs) i'm talking about uh ideas you know when people say you're either this or you're either that you're red or you're blue you're republican or you're democrat why 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 do people think that's okay, but they don't think they don't think that way in any other sense of anything else? That was weird and weird, but you know what I'm saying, right? Why does it have to be exactly one side or exactly the other side? That doesn't make sense, and it never has, and it never will. You know what I'm saying, brother? Spectrums are everywhere. Everything is a spectrum. Nothing is perfect. But we want it to be. Why is that? Why do we need right angles? Why do they have to be perfectly exact right angles? Why do our spoons... And forks and knives have to be the exact same length and the exact same weight and the exact same shape. Why do bowling balls smell like urine when I stick my fingers in the holes and pull them out and sniff? Are all bowling balls like that? Or is it just the ones that I use when I hang out with Gregory. Is Gregory just peeing in my 
bowling ball holes? Maybe. But I don't think I'm the only one, right? I can't be the only one. Uh, who's selling Hanukkah this Hanukkah? Who's celebrating Hanukkah this year? Are you? Are you a little Jewish boy? Are you are you a little Jew? <laughs> oh god. Remember how the world used to be? I'm sure everyone has said this every, you know, decade. The older you get, the more you reminisce about the past. But just remember how it used to be. It was so different. Very different. It's always changing. What am I What am I saying, dude? You know, it's always changing. Do we worry? I don't know. Everyone worries every decade. They think, oh, this is going to happen. And this is going to happen. And we're going to have this happen. And people will say, well, we're living in like a, the weirdest time that's ever existed. Well, are we? I don't know, dude. I don't know if we are. People could actually be dying by the millions right now, but it's, you know. And I mean, yeah, the, the, co the there is COVID killing people, but it's not like, it's not like it's the Black Plague and we have no resources to fight it off in any sort of capacity you know like we're we're decent but who knows what's gonna happen maybe the whole world's gonna crumble maybe there's gonna be a giant hand that comes out of the sky and reaches into our globe and grabs it and says what is this this looks like something I could throw across the universe and he'd be holding it and he'd be moving it around so we'd be getting like closer and farther away from the sun and a rotation would stop too so we'd all fly up well we'd all we'd all be dead because we'd fly off the fucking earth so fast if the earth stopped rotating you'd be gone you would slingshot into the fucking universe and then you would freeze how long could you live let's ask neil degrasse tyson Hey, Neil, if the earth stopped rotating and we slingshotted into the sky like a goddamn, uh, mm, I can't think of something to say. What would happen? Would we die instantly? Or would we be able to float around up there for a little bit? What happens if you poop in space? What happens if you eat your poop in space? It's been... Spotify is testing out its own version of stories. Let's do that again. Spotify is testing out its own version of stories. Ugh. Oh, God, I'm going to puke. I'm going to puke. Remember when... Uh. Remember when it was just Snapchat that had the stories? Remember that? Because I do. I also remember when Instagram was like, well, we're going to do stories now. And then everyone was like, this is so dumb. Why? You know? And then everyone accepted it. And now Instagram stories are more popular than Snapchat stories. And then Facebook came along and was like, well, we own Instagram. And they have stories, so we're going to have stories too. Oh, great. And then YouTube was like, well, shit. Well, we better have stories as well, I guess. And now Spotify, Spotify is doing stories. Like, I get it. I get you got to stay with the times and you got to do what's trending. But there's just so much fucking out my jaw. <laughs> there's just so much goddamn content everywhere. It's just like you got your main video on the platform. 
Then you got the stories. Then you got the, the, um, well, what else is, uh, Twitter has stories too now. What the, what I'm missing out on Twitter, you know? So you got, like, you got your, tw your tweets you got to keep updated with, and then your Twitter stories, and then your Instagram pictures that you got to post, and then your Instagram stories, and then now if you're uploading to Spotify, it's like you're uploading music or podcast and a fucking story, and then YouTube's the same shit. It's just, if you're a creator on the internet, you need to use all these platforms to promote your shit. And it's just like, oh, it's just more and more. It's just like, why? Do we need this many? We really don't. I don't need to, I don't need to watch your story on Spotify and iTunes. Or not iTunes. Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. Like, come on, man. I don't want it i don't even watch the stories i don't i click on them a few every once in a while and i'm like what is this i get it i said the same thing about twitter back in 2008 or whenever the fuck it came out i was like what is twitter this doesn't even make sense you write stuff like what does at mean what are these hashtags i thought they were pound signs what, is, what does a hashtag do, you know? You don't get it at first. And then the longer it sticks around, the more it starts to make sense. And then you use it, and then, you know, the more you use it, you realize, oh, this actually doesn't make sense, and it's useless, and it's ruining society. But we just continue to use it. And so am I going to post clips of the podcast on Spotify if they do implement these stories? I don't know. Why are you asking me, bro? Why the fuck are you asking me? I don't know. And I try to have opinions on things, but then I think about past experiences and I'm like, well... I felt this way back then, and it changed now, so how am I going to feel now? I don't know. Maybe in the future, I'll be like, stories are the fucking way to go. The main content on the fucking, you know, homepage is, is useless. No one cares about that. All they care about are stories now. Story, story, story. Everyone's got one. Story, story, story. Let me hear yours. I know it didn't rhyme. <laughs> But I, I don't, I don't give a, f I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck. I've already talked about everything on this card except for one thing. But don't worry, we've got TikToks and we've got, am I the asshole? We're gonna do another one of those. Not yet though. Not yet. I just want to show you this video. This has been going around. This has been trending. Been seeing all kinds, not just this video, but video, like a bunch of videos. Same idea. They're like Asian looking fellers. They kind of resemble monks. I don't know. But they're kicking each other in the balls as hard as they can. Not just kicking, but bricks and. Well, why don't we take a look? Ah. Oh my god. Hi. So hard. There's the brick. Look at this. Could you do that? I bet you couldn't do that. Wow. Fucking fantastic. Why though? That's all I know. Ah, man. What the fuck? What is the what is the purpose of this? Is what I want to know. Like what is this doing? Is this strengthening something? There's got to be a reason why they feel like they need to do this, right? What do they gain from this? They don't do anything if they're not going to gain something from it. You know? 
I doubt that they're doing it because they enjoy it. But who knows, man? Let's see what the comments have to say. Every man watches his feel the pain. Let's let's use the Google machine. Uh, why do? Yeah. And then the balls. Let's see, this is a Reddit post. So they are monks. When Shaolin monks hit themselves in the nuts with bricks and fists to show their discipline and pain tolerance, how do they avoid serious... Oh, so they're doing it for to show their discipline and pain tolerance. It is essentially an old fakir trick. You tuck your junk up back into the taint or somewhere and then only hit the area where people would expect the yarbles to be. Well, hold on a minute here. What does O-T-O-H mean? There are people who either don't mind the pain or even get off on it. But hold on a minute here. So they're not they are not actually hitting themselves in the nooblies. They're just tucking back and hitting the... Pe- that would still not feel great, though. Definitely would be better than the actual giblets right I remember when I used to watch um, Kenny versus Spenny like religiously I would finish off the entire season or the entire series season 1 through 6 I would start again right back from season 1 and I would just run through it over and over and over I was so obsessed with that show I loved it and then any spin-offs that they had, I was watching it. I went through the same stages with Jackass. All the Jackass stuff, you know, it started with just watching the Jackass movies. Then I watched all the all the episodes of the season of Jackass. I think there was only one season, maybe a few, I can't remember. And then I was watching Wild Boys and um Home Wrecker um with Ryan Dunn. And uh, Bam's Unholy Union, Viva La Bam, the Gumball episodes, everything that those guys did, I was watching. Same thing with Kenny vs. Spenny. And when uh, there was an episode called, oh, what the fuck was the episode? Who could lift more weight with their genitals? I don't remember. It was something like that. They had a competition where they had to lift the most weight with their genitals. (laughs) <laughs> and they called it Key Gong. And that's what this reminds me of. Kenny Kenny put like a, a basket around his penis, tied it to a string, and he was putting fake bricks into the basket to make it look like he was lifting these bricks with his penis. And Spenny walked in and was like amazed because Kenny was doing such a good acting job pretending like he was lifting these bricks. You know what? I might watch that episode of Kenny vs. Spenny tonight because I have all the episodes on a hard drive an old ass hard drive up there my very first terabyte hard drive I've got I kept all my hard drives I've got one terabyte hard drive full of videos from when I was younger and a bunch of other shit and then I've got a three terabyte hard drive that I don't think is quite full yet but uh, I stopped using it because it wasn't portable you had to plug it into a power source and also USB. So it wasn't ideal. So then I bought another three terabyte hard drive that is does not need to be powered by uh, an outlet. I should probably plug this camera in because it might die. I got a weird vision that it was going to die. And I don't, oh, ow. I don't want that to happen.
Put the cheese in the middle. What do you get? You remember Knox Corner? Those, uh, that claymation where they were like little blue characters. Let me show you what they look like. I want to show you what they look like. Knox. This was also a huge part of my childhood. Knox Corner. Oh, is their website gone? Oh. What? Oh, God. This is fucking... Did you see all the ads that popped up there? That was like fucking uh, Trojan Horse City. Remember the Trojan Horses? Remember how everyone was scared about the Trojan Horse virus? Yep, these guys. I loved this shit as a kid. Oh my god, did I ever love this. The funniest. I never laughed so hard in my life. The first one I saw was the episode where he where he drowns. Which is the macaroni episode. Let's see. Drowning. In cup of water. Let's see if we can find this episode. Here it is, glass of water. Bring back memories. I don't know why they have apostrophe S. Hey, oh cool, it's a cup. I'm thirsty anyway. Hey, hey, you gonna drink all of that? Cause I really like some of that drink right now. Oh no, what'd you do? Look at it. It's everywhere. Now you're gonna drown the whole world. We got we. Oh no, I can't get away from it. Don't just stand there. Are you crazy? We what? gotta get away from it. I can't swim either. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh this... god. This is not. Hey, you! Over here! Okay. Like, this is not even funny. But. Oh man. Back then, when I would watch this shit, I would, I was laughing unbelievably hard at that. I thought that was the funniest thing I had ever seen. But now, it's just like so not funny that I don't even want to watch it. Funny how that works, eh? The fu Another funny thing is normal Now, you if you've been watching these episodes... You know, I, w I was saying, like, I was taking way too big of hoots. And I was getting too buzzed, too baked, too too caked. And uh, my mind wouldn't function the way I wanted it to. And the episodes would turn out bad. And every single time, I was like, I gotta take a smaller hoot, smaller hoot, smaller hoot. And I never did. But this time I did. And it worked out pretty good. But now it's starting to wear off. And now I'm like, I want to have another hoot. But it's all the way over there, and all I've got is a dab rig. So if I, you know, go over there and heat that up and take all that, you know, it's going to take a little while. Remember the old episodes of this podcast where I would do that? Multiple times throughout the episode. I would just heat up that nail <laughs> and fucking drop it on. Woohoo. <laughs> Okay, let's do an Am I the Asshole, and then we're going to watch some Tick Ticks. Okay? So first got to find an Am I the Asshole. Which one do you want to do? Am I the Asshole for asking my girlfriend not to come over for a day so I can enjoy my new game? Nah, I, I don't know. Am I the Asshole for not giving my stepbrother a family baby blanket? Am I the Asshole for arguing with my brother's wife after she announced her pregnancy at my daughter's birthday party? Mm, am I the asshole for kicking my M-I-L? What does that mean? Out oh, because she didn't like the way we lived instead of... Mother-in-law. Ah, am I the asshole for forcing my middle son to quit soccer years ago? Am I the asshole for telling my ex he doesn't get to do enjoyable things with our son? Am I the asshole for telling my aunt I'm not going to follow her relationship advice because she's a quadruple divorcee? 
Aim the asshole for go going a little Karen and possibly getting a door dasher fired in the midst of a pandemic. Here we go. This is going to be juicy. I like a good Karen. <laughs> All right. This might not be as good as I'm hyping it up, but let's let's do it. All right. Am I the asshole for going a little Karen and possibly getting a door dasher fired in the midst of a pandy? I placed an order for food with DoorDash, and after it was 30 minutes late past the delivery time, I called the driver. In broken English, she said the line at the restaurant was an hour long to pick up food. I gave her the benefit of the doubt and waited another 30 minutes. I called her again after it was an hour late, and she said, Okay, open the gate for me. I do not live in a gated community. When I tried to explain it to her, she frantically said, I have to go home. I have to go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And hung up on me. She then texted me and said, Sorry, not my fault. Problem restaurant. I guess I should do that in an accent, but I'm not going to. Poor grammar. I only bring this up because I don't think she knows how to use the app. Communicate her issues with me, etc. I responded, I will be reporting the issue with DoorDash. I called DoorDash to get a refund on my order and would not have filed a grievance against her except while on hold I received a call from an anonymous number claiming to be DoorDash? Uh oh. In a male voice with the same accent, <laughs> the driver had someone call me and fake a refund. I confirmed this with the real DoorDash who was on the other line. <gasps> So I asked for an official incident report to be filed against her. Look, I know what she did was stupid and dishonest, but considering that most people who do this line of work are hard up for money, we're in a pandemic, and I'm a very comfortable upper middle class person who can afford takeout. Am I the asshole for getting super Karen and filing a complaint? This one sucked. This was boring. I wish I didn't read this one. Wouldn't it be nice if we were homeless? Is she the asshole? I don't know. Is she the asshole? I don't know. Let me think for a second. I'm slow cooking some pulled pork right now. And that big breath I took was just entirety of pulled pork. So I can't even think straight. Is she the asshole? I don't know. All I smell is poor pork. Poor pork. Poor pork. <laughs> is she the asshole? Let me think for a second. I can't. All I smell is pulled pork. It doesn't let me think. We're moving on. Get a move on, young doggy. Uh, you want to see our lineup? Well, there it is. You can't really see it, but that's the lineup. That's the lineup to Zellers. Remember Zellers? Actually, let's start with this one. We're going to start with uh, a little Rage Against the Machine uh, by uh, uh, in the in the in the um, in the cadence of Michael McDonald. You know Michael McDonald, and if you don't, you'll you'll know what I'm saying once you watch this. Oh yeah, Heath Allen. I don't like how you spell your name. But guess what, buddy? You're good in my books. Wow, I've never seen Alan spelt like that. A-L-L-Y-N? Come on, Heath. I mean, it's not your fault. It's your parents. Your parents. Come on. Heath Allen with a Y? Get the fuck out of here. Alan. It does kind of make sense. But come on. Either spell the name it's supposed to, the, the way it's supposed to be spelt, or come up with a new fucking name. I mean, come on. I wonder what this guy's name is. 
write in the comments what you think this guy's name is. Because I have no idea. Knock at the door. Pull the bell. This doesn't even look like a real person. Lift the latch. And walk. What was that? What's going on here? I don't like it, to be honest. I I don't even know why I included this. Look at his eyebrow hairs. He looks... I don't... You know, sometimes I don't like cutting too deep on people. Because this, you know, this guy just got... He, you know, he was unlucky. This is a bad, bad, bad luck of the draw there. You know, he was handed all the wrong cards in the looks department. Um, he's probably a nice guy. I mean, who knows? Maybe he's not uh, fully functional. I don't know. Let's move on. I don't want to. I don't want to discuss this guy any further. And not to be mean, but I just. I don't know. This guy has some stuff to say about Charlie Brown, and I think it's really important because Charlie Brown has always been looked at in a certain light in our society. I mean, even during these times, Christmas time, people look to Charlie Brown. You know, he's part of the culture. People have the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. They throw on a Charlie Brown TV show. They, uh... They got ugly Christmas sweaters with Charlie Brown Christmas themed on the sweater. He's still relevant today. He's still part of the image of what we think Christmas is. But what we don't know... Well, we're about to find out. Charlie Brown was retarded. He always played football with Lucy, who would move the ball so Charlie Brown would hurt himself. He had a dog named Snoopy, who was always on drugs. His family only bought Charlie Brown one shirt. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure Charlie Brown also had leukemia. Yep. I'd agree with all of that. Charlie Brown is retar retarded. I almost said retarded. Charlie Brown is retarded. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny because you can't say the word retard anymore. It's funny because he's saying that Charlie Brown is retarded and has leukemia and only has one shirt. Your boy D, the poetic butcher. 504. 504. 504. Remember how like gangsters used to say like 199 or whatever, you know, like they'd throw out their gang sign and then a number afterwards. What was that all about? I don't know. But imagine if like gamers who have numbers in their names started calling out their numbers. Like this guy would be like, the poetic butcher, 504 for life, baby. <laughs> right? And then if, if my username was used to be Dynamite Gizmo 94 I'd be like, Dynamite Gizmo, 94 for life, baby. Right? Charlie Brown's retarded. We all know it. We all knew it, and we all know it. That's why Lucy wouldn't date him. Because Charlie Brown is retarded. You heard it here first, folks. I love saying the word retarded. I always did as a kid. I always would, you know? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it can be used in, like, a really derogatory way, if you use it that way. But if you, you know, like Michael, Michael Scott said, you don't call retards retarded, you call your friends retarded when they're acting like retards. <laughs> right? Right. Um, however you feel about COVID... You know, whether you're on the red side or the blue side, I don't give a fuck. And I don't care. But I've, I've, I've found a couple scientists. I found a couple of uh, epidemiologists who are going to discuss, uh, you know, the truths about COVID. 
and it really was an eye-opener for me. And I would just like to show you it here today. It's a, it's, it's a really interesting take on COVID. I, I've, I've actually never heard this perspective before, so we're going to listen to it together. We don't have the vibrational frequency to hold, host that virus. And I taught her that. So if you if you don't have that vibra vib vibrational frequency, she right taught here, her that. You're not going to get it. Yeah. I you we don't have the vibrational frequency to get COVID. Correct. Do you know that everything in this universe vibrates? Wow. And is no alive. Way. There is life with that. That's no what fucking I'm talking way, about. Dude. I don't put life into COVID. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to wear a mask, mask either. Wow. I never wear a mask. We're not no. Wear them. Ever. Oh wow. I would have never I would have never guessed. I mean I would have I'm glad I'm glad I ran into these women. It's so interesting. We all vibrate. Every living thing on this planet vibrates. And we don't have the vibrational frequency to catch COVID. Huh. I would have never guessed, dude. It all makes sense now. I mean that girl explained it to her. She even said it herself. I explained it to her. So it's got to be, you know, can't be wrong, right? I am like so hungry right now. And that pulled pork is not going to be ready until maybe six or seven, maybe even eight o'clock. Oh. <laughs> I'm so hungry. I could eat a whole turkey right now. A lot of people hate turkey. I see that now. On the internet. Videos. People. During Thanksgiving. They're like, I don't even like turkey. I don't even like it. Since when? Then why do you do it every year? I like turkey. Yeah, it's a little dry, but it tastes good. And when you put the gravy on it, it's like nom nom. It's good. Everyone's, everyone just loves copying other people and being like, oh, I don't like turkey. It's too dry. No, it's not. Eat it. Put it in your mouth. It's food. And all the other stuff's good. It just all fits together so nicely. The carrots and the potatoes, the gravy, the stuffing, and the cranberry sauce. I mean, come on. You don't like Thanksgiving dinner? Look, I love Thanksgiving dinner. I hate Thanksgiving because I hate family. I hate family gatherings. It's bologna. I don't like bologna. I do like bologna, but I don't like Thanksgiving gatherings. <laughs> and I do like Thanksgiving dinner. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Samson Trundle. We got a bag of Alfredo. We're going to see what's inside. It's just Alfredo. Like I honestly forgot what the hell this video was. I remember the bag, and I remember him cutting it open and squirting the juices out of it, but I, I didn't remember if it was gravy or if it was a turkey in there. Turns out it was Alfredo. Alf not just, not like a whole plate of chicken Alfredo, but like just the Alfredo sauce. Just the Alfredo sauce. I just, you know, I'm from Nova Scotia. Y'all know that. Well, y'all don't know that. Y'all probably don't know that, but now you know. And there's a certain archetype that everyone falls into. Everyone. Okay? And no matter where you go, people fall into these specific archetypes of people. You just, like, you see, you see how people act and you're like, oh, you're from here because of the way you are. And I've showed this guy before, and I've said he reminds me of home because he fits the archetype of the people you find in Nova Scotia, specifically where I'm from. He is like, I've seen hundreds of guys that are the, the, this guy right here. And it's, such, it's so interesting. I've been away from it so long that when I come back and watch these, this guy on TikTok, I'm like, oh my God, that's home. He reminds me of home every time I watch him. And I just want to show it again. Just so you know what I'm feeling. What? 
Your hair's a mess. Yeah, because you won't put a fucking brush or a comb in there <laughs> or a fucking hairspray. That's why. I'm not talking about the comb. I'm talking about the hairspray. Oh, my God, Dad. What? Dad, what? Look at my fucking hair. You know why? Because I can't comb it. There's a brush in your, your... There's a brush. <laughs> Is there any fucking hairspray to calm it down? What the fuck would you need hairspray? Oh, shut, shut up. Shut up. Shut, shut up, John. You don't have much <laughs> fucking hair as I okay. have. Okay, it looks good. Well, I just combed it, that's why. There, you... there was hairspray there to keep the fucking thing down. Put it on and then I slick her back. Where was the hairspray? Under the sink. Right. Well, now I know I'll get it. <laughs> So you won't have your... Oh, it's great, dude. That's literally everyone's grandfather or father in Nova Scotia. That's everyone. That's, you know? You may not understand it. You may be like, what the fuck? I don't get it. But to me, it makes sense. And we saw the guy in the opening clip um, tell that awesome joke. Fuck, that was funny, wasn't it? What a great joke. His name's Wes Rogers. Three. And he's got fucking hundreds of these. He's just uploading every day. A nice little joke. A nice little joke. And he's got, you know, because he's got so many, I'm like, I might as well just feature another one, right? So... Wes Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. Why do hamburgers go to the gym? To get better buns. <laughs> now, I can't tell. I can't tell if he's trolling. Or if this is him. Or if this is actually who he is. And I've said that before. And I'll continue to say it with the other videos. I hate that I repeat myself. I always say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I always say that. And I keep saying it. But whatever. That's my archetype. You know what I'm saying about this guy though? Like, one more time. Just watch it one more time. Why do hamburgers go to the gym? To get better buns. Because <laughs> <laughs> the little laugh at the end and the fact that he's taken forever to hit the pause button and he keeps that in the video... Because easily someone would do, would make a video like that, you know, trying to be that awkward comedy that I was talked about at the beginning of this episode. People love doing the awkward comedy shit. And if that, if this is, if this is him actually acting, then he's doing a fucking fantastic job. But this also could be just who he is. And because of that, it's also funny. Like, either way, it's funny. Again, this is why I love TikTok. It's fucking beautiful. It's so good, the content you get from it. And I know it's simple, and I know it's like, it's literally like nothing, and you could easily do it, but the details are important. The details are what are important to make things funny. Well, we're going to watch it one more time. Why do hamburgers go to the gym? To get better buns. Okay, he's even got a ring light because you can see it in his glasses. He finishes the joke. He does the little <laughs> awkward laugh. And he takes too long to pause the camera. Like, that's... Those are indications of... Um, Amateur, amateur fucking, uh, you know, moves on the internet. And so people make videos like these to make fun of those people. And so you don't know what's real and what's fake. And it's the beauty, it's, you know, whatever. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Um... What's your favorite thing on TikTok? What's your thing? Remember those commercials? I can make dinosaur noises. 
<laughs> I like to collect bugs. Mom, Jimmy's trying to cut me in half again. Remember that? That was a good commercial. Those were the best. I got too many nose hairs. You, you have that problem? Too many nose hairs? I need to wax them. There's this waxing shit you can put, stick it in your nose, let it dry, and then fucking rip them all out at once. Sounds painful, but I, I want to do it because my nose hairs. It's like a literal jungle in here to the point where I have very hard time breathing through my nose. And I don't know if it's because of the nose hairs or maybe I've got a deviated septum. Is that the right term? Because I can't... I don't know. It does feel weird in there. It feels weird in my sinus region. I would love to get it looked at and maybe get it fixed. And then if I did it... <laughs> Whoa! I could breathe through my nose! And maybe I would talk a little bit clearer. Because it does always sound like I've got a little bit of phlegm floating around in my face. Uh, fake videos can be good if the acting is done well. You know this. I know this. Fake videos can be good if you can't tell if they're fake or real, which we just went over this in the last clip that we watched. But I want to give another example of something that is either potentially real or potentially fake and we may never know but either way it's good now here's why i think it's fake because again you gotta ask the question why are they filming he's just walking out the door why are they filming maybe they knew he was gonna slip because there's ice out there here's what i think happened Again, same scenario as the last episode. He he originally walked out that door, slipped, did that, but it was organic and original. And they said, oh, we got to film that. Come back in here and do it again. And then they did it again. I guarantee that's what happened. But he did a good job at recreating it, so I give him a pass. Good for you, fella. Good for you, Tommy Steele 09. And if it is just genuinely real from start to finish, that was the original moment, then even better. Even better. <laughs> Isn't that nice? We're going to watch it again. I'm probably going to get copyright claimed. <laughs> the way he climbs the stairs. It's so insane. We're going to watch it again without the sound because I don't want to risk it anymore. Look how he runs up the stairs. So fast. How do you even do that? That dog's crazy, dude. That's a good video. Anything with animals is usually always real. Unless they really have the dog really trained, but then you can usually tell. But shit like that is just awesome. Just like this. Um, I haven't actually been to a place where they had to take my temperature yet. I mean, I'm in rural Alberta, Canada. Nobody's taking it as seriously as they are in the United States here. Okay, like we literally just started actually taking the mask thing seriously. And even then, no one's really, you know, taking it seriously. Uh, but yeah, you hear about people having to take temperatures before they get into places. Um... But this is this is awesome. I love I love the TikToks where it's the guy at the convenience store who's filming the customer because the customers are acting really strange. Those are great, and those you know are raw. Well, again, you never really know if things are fake or real, but 
when they look as genuine as this do, you you just you go with it because it's so good. Oh, okay. Let's see, I gotta check that out. Let's see, hold on. Oh, let's see. Oh shit, you got Rona. I do. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? One on one. No way. Yeah. What the fuck? Hold on. You sure? Are <laughs> you sure? Yeah. <laughs> What the yeah. fuck? Oh my god. That is good. I kind of want to see more, but that's all there is. That's all. That's the end of the video right there. Are you serious? <laughs> What's it say? 101. Let me check again. <laughs> For those listening, uh, the guy at the cash register, the cashier fella, he's got a customer. Um... And he's pretending to take her temperature with the uh, price tag gun. The one that actually puts the sticker on the product. So he puts it up to her forehead, slaps a sticker on her forehead. And he's like, ah, it's 101, you got corona. And then he, they check it again and he puts another sticker on her forehead. <laughs> and she has no idea. She just thinks that's the gun used to check your temperature. And now she thinks she's got COVID. Listen, listen, I want everyone to listen to me right now. I am so hungry. Okay. I can't, like, I don't even want to do any more of this because I just want to eat. I am so fucking hungry and all I'm smelling is pulled pork. It's clouding all my thoughts and emotions I'm just so, I need to eat right now. If I don't eat right now, I might pass out and die. So, that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Shitcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Fondle that bell notification. Fondle it like it's the 1950s and you're walking past a construction straight site as a young lady in a nice skirt. Uh, <laughs> I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.